What's up everyone? This is Felix with Volpine Creation. Thank you so much for being here. This is so exciting because this is the official start of my journey from zero to hero or if you have a better title than that, please feel free to put it down in the comments. This is, this is still the working title and we haven't had enough uh, inputs from you guys to, to name this section properly. The whole purpose of this video series is to get into magic properly. As you probably know, I'm an amateur. I've never performed in my entire life. Uh, I know a bunch of tricks, I know a bunch of slides, because that was what I was able to practice in my hotel room when I was traveling the world as a consultant, business and strategy consultant. And I said it before, I spent 200 plus nights in hotels and the best thing you can take with you is a deck of cards. So like in the last video where Adam and I were discussing openness, uh, the first one was a silk to egg. The next one was uh, best not of silks and then finally the, the ketchup bottle production which we call the bottle opener So the first effect we're going to start with is silk to egg like promised I've never performed it in my entire life. I don't know how the trick works. Well, I've got understanding of the basic mechanics, but I never practiced it So we started from scratch So the first step is I'm going to do some research on the trick then I gather the props I have them already here and finally I'm going to watch and study a bunch of performances so I get a better understanding of what I like, what fits my persona and how I like to perform this wonderful trick, which is the silk to egg. So let's dive right into it. All right, let's start with a little bit of research on this wonderful effect, silk to egg. Um, I want to dive into it and Adam pointed me into the right direction, I guess. He told me that askalexander.org is the place if you want to research anything about magic tricks. And it, he said it's the most complete and profound encyclopedia of magic you will ever find. So let's, let's give it a try. So if I type in silk to egg. Let's see what comes up. If I'm not mistaken, and I'm getting this right here, the man responsible for silk to egg, uh, so basically where a magician pokes a, a silk into a handkerchief, which was a luxury item at the time, made it disappear, and or basically turned it into an egg, and made the silk jump into his pocket. This was the first time it was performed in this way and it was Colonel still there. He was also responsible for the Sphinx illusion. He lived between 1831 and 1866. So when it was published in 1876 in Modern Magic on page 260, Colonel, it was 10 years after Colonel Stodea's death. It is a wonderful legacy because even after all this time, it is still performed and loved by so many magicians and audiences alike. So if I got something wrong or if I missed a resource, uh, I apologize. Uh, please put it down in the comments. I'm really trying to learn here. Um, and we're in this together, so thank you so much in advance. So, all right, so let's dive into some of the best performances captured on video. YouTube. Let's go into this trusted resource, which is called YouTube and look for Let's start off with one of my favorite performers. Um, I mean, he is beloved by many because of his charm and uh, his humor and the way he presents things. It's, it's, just, it's just hilarious. So as far as I know, he started out as a street performer uh, in the streets of Chicago. And he spent a lifetime in magic. It's, it's absolutely, it's absolutely incredible. At one point, he was also the vice president of the Magic Castle and he released so many hilarious effects like for example the teleportation device, uh, Mongolian pop knots, his uh, four ring routine and um, it seems like a silk to egg. So let's watch the performance together. Without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the vice president of the Magic Castle, Pop Hayden. That's enough, honey. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's just amazing. Come on, look at him. You gotta love him. This, this, uh, 
Wild West medicine snake oil salesman. It's perfect. <laughs> we gotta get the show going. <laughs> Good evening, folks. I hope you're enjoying your evening here at the Magic Castle. It's a wonderful place, is it not? Yes. Magic, as you may know, is the world's second oldest profession. <laughs> Both professions are being ruined these days by amateurs. <laughs> the case for one of which propositions I'm about to make. Okay. I mean, Okay, I mean, when we look at his opening, uh, come on, you gotta love him, right? So he comes out there and first of all, he owns the room, right? He takes his time, he's standing still, he's not fumbling around, which is, which shows his experience. And simultaneously, he's talking into the slow pace, which gives weight to his words and this move. It's just perfect, right? You can see that he is a professional right off the bat. <laughs> and the joke with the amateurs, come on, you gotta love it. And at this point, he has 100% won over everyone in the audience. Come on, after, after this entrance and the joke, there's no one who is, who is not falling in love with him already. Or his persona, already. Okay, let's get back. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, over the years, magicians have got sort of a reputation for never explaining how anything is done. Until recently on blocks. <laughs> I thought it would be fun if tonight, instead of trying to trick you and deceive you, if I actually taught you step by step how some of the classic feats of magic are performed. Would you like to learn how to do a magic trick? Sure. Yes. Good. First I'll do the trick and then I'll show you step by step how it was accomplished. We take a silk scarf, place it into the hand, and then you say the magic words. No. <laughs> no. Show me the money's good. <laughs> but for this one, it's Sim Salabim. <laughs> Suddenly, the scarf is gone in its place today. The scarf has traveled all the way over here. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Well, um, this was actually really good because I got no idea when he pulled the egg out. Should we watch it again? Let's watch it again. Leon Fox. <laughs> I thought it would be fun if tonight, instead of trying to trick you and deceive you, if I actually taught you step by step how some of the classic feats of magic are performed, would you like to learn how to do a magic trick? Yes. Yes. Good. First I'll do the trick and then I'll show you step by step how it was accomplished. We take a silk scarf, place it into the hand, and then you say the magic words. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> show me the money's good. <laughs> But for this one, it's Sim Salabim. <laughs> Who the hell says Sim Salabim? No one, right? It's, yeah, it's typically him. I love how he's interacting with the audience. It's, it's more like a conversation than a presentation. Obviously, he's doing all these moves and he's showing and explaining what he's doing, but it's like he's talking with the person right in front of him or with the people right in front of him. And so it's very inclusive instead of, this is me and you are over there and watch what I can do. Sim Salabim. Suddenly the scarf. The way it's, yeah. The scarf is gone in its places today. The scarf has traveled all the way over here. <laughs> It's actually kind of a stupid trick. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> See, the secret is the magician has two of these red scarves, one of which is hidden inside the egg. How else? See, you have a, a, a two scarves, you have an egg, the contents of the egg have been removed. 
this is very important. <laughs> Make a mistake here, you're going to mess up your scar. <laughs> you leave a hole inside the eggshell about the size of your thumb. You have one of the scars hidden from the very beginning of the trick in a tight ball down inside your pocket. Since no one knows the scarf is down there, it gives you what we call in our profession the element of surprise. <laughs> you wave the scarf around and stick it right inside the eggshell. Since no one knows you have an eggshell hidden inside your hand, that gives you a second element of surprise. Does everyone follow so far? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You say the magic word, Sim Salabim. You drop the egg, you reach in your pocket, you get the scarf, you've done a magic trick. That's all there is. There is one problem with this trick. Occasionally there is some wise guy in the audience wants to see the egg. You cannot show him the egg, of course. That tends to give the secret of the trick away because everyone's going to see the hole. What you have to do is this secretly. Don't let anyone see you do this. Secretly. You peel that hole off of the egg and hide it someplace in the stick. That's how much that does. This will throw most people off. If they want to look at it closer, you can let them look at it. When did he switch the egg? When did he do it? He had it in few the whole... It was in few the whole time. When, when did he switch the egg? Pop! Stop doing this to me. Secret. You peel that hole off of the egg and hide it someplace in this papers. Now what that does, this will throw most people off. All right, yeah, they this will throw most closely. people off. Let them look at it as closely as they um, I saw when he... No. Okay, uh, at this point I'm made of questions right now. I love his performance, I love the interaction with the audience and also the pacing. Uh, I'm not sure if I can pull, I could pull off this, this sort of dry humor when he's basically saying something quite serious and by the way he looks and changes his mimic. Um, that uh, he can do it, but I would love to and I guess I'm not the only one who would utter this wish. Um, he's, a, he's a tremendous performer. Okay, let's Let's try to find somebody else. Silk to egg. I found a video of Lance Burton. He was recommended to me from various sources. Uh, Adam, and, Adam and such. Uh, let's take a look. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Uh, on the Late Late Show. Uh, now, normally I would come out and I would perform a magic trick for you folks, but I want to do something really special today, and I got to thinking about it. Now, you remember, oh, a couple of years ago, there was a guy on TV doing magic, and he would come out, he would demonstrate a magic trick, uh, then he'd turn around, he'd show you how the trick is done. He would expose the secrets to the magic. You never saw his face, though. He had this black uh, mask on the mass magician. That's right. That's what he called himself, uh, the mass magician. And uh, you know, uh, uh, a lot of magicians were really uh, mad uh, about those shows. I do remember this show, The Mask Magician. Uh, the fun part is, I started, <clears throat> I started card tricks, or basically practicing a bunch of slides in 2016, something like this, 2016. I, I received the magic kit as a kid and I hated it. Um, I was, I don't know, six, seven years old or something. Uh, I didn't like it at all. Um, Copperfield was pretty big at this time. In Austria, even, uh, even in the, the late shows, <laughs> late shows in the 80s. Um, the late shows in the 80s were between 8 p.m. and 10 p.m. and after that the TV program stopped. Um, and basically the station shut off. But Copperfield was one of the main acts in those, in those shows. And I watched it, but it never fascinated me. Maybe I didn't understand it because it was too small as a kid and I was expecting that magic is obviously and 100% and a part of our life. But it didn't, it didn't really ex excite me at all. Like, none. I do remember the show The Masked Magician. It, it, I, I never really liked it because uh, 
first hand I, I wasn't too much into illusions and then seeing the method behind it was, was discounting it or even uh, de degrading the value of the experience. Uh, I didn't like it at all. I, li I like to be fooled. Mad about those shows. <laughs> not me. I learned a lot of new tricks. It's <laughs> actually a good show. Of course. Now he's not doing those uh, shows any uh, more. We uh, <laughs> we killed him and uh, starting to feel real bad about that. So I decided I'm going to make up for it uh, on Magic Week. I'm going to do my own little teach a trick segment to kick off the week. Now, uh, first I'll demonstrate the trick so you can see what it looks like. Then I'll show you how it's done. When you get up tomorrow, you can go to school, you can go to work, you can amaze your friends with this. It's a simple trick with a purple handkerchief. All it takes is a squeeze, a snap, it changes into an egg, the handkerchief jumps into the pocket. That's the trick. Okay, I, I know, I know. You're thinking, Lance, sure, you can do this. You do this for a living. I'll never be able to do it. Folks, it's really easy once you know the secret. The secret to the trick is right there. You thought it was going to be something clever, didn't you? <laughs> you need two handkerchiefs. Make sure they're the same color. <laughs> You'd be surprised. You also need what we imagine call a magician's egg. Now, a magician's egg is not an egg that is laid by a magician. It's okay. a wooden egg or a plastic egg. It's hollowed out. It's got a little hole there on the side. Now, that's all you need to do the trick. Now, before you start the trick, you have to do what we in magic call your presets. This is what you do before you come out in front of the audience. One of the handkerchiefs goes into your pocket. The wooden egg goes into your pocket. Come out in front of the audience. Now, here's the important part. Uh, don't start the trick right away. Chat with the audience for a moment. Tell a joke if you know one. If you don't know a joke, confess to a murder. <laughs> The right hand can then slip into the pocket and take out the wooden egg. The audience will never notice this because they're not watching you. They're contemplating your felony confession. In magic, this is called misdirection. Bring the egg out clipped between the two middle fingers and the palm of the right hand. In magic, this is called palming. As a young boy, I used to practice this in Walmart. Now you're ready to start the trick as far as the audience is concerned. Slowly poke the handkerchief into the egg. In magic, this is called poking the handkerchief into the egg. Snap your finger, show the egg to the audience, reach into your pocket. Stating the obvious! It's, it's fun. It's still, it's, still, it's fun. <laughs> I like it. Into your pocket, take out the extra handkerchief, smile, Bell, the audience goes crazy. Now, now, one little tip. If you do this for your friends, make sure they're all sitting in front of you. If anyone is behind you, don't do the trick. They will see the hole in the egg. They will not be impressed. <laughs> If that should happen, if someone should notice the hole, remain calm. Do what I do. Remove the hole from the egg. Then, pretend to crack the egg into a glass. That way you don't end up with egg on your face. Yeah, that's a good one. Thank you. So, Lance Burton, obviously a great performance and a tremendous performance. So, a very good recommendation thanks to Adam and Richie Flo. And the final performance is by our good friend Adam Wilber. I had the opportunity to film him when he was in Austria. We were together in Vienna and where we were filming uh, the Gaff Lighter project and some other things we were going to release in the near future. He was booked for this, this tremendous gig in the Palais Coburg, a beautiful location in the heart of Vienna. 
and I was able to capture his opener, Silk to Egg. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Can everybody in the back hear me okay? Thumbs up, perfect. So the first surprise is I only speak English. I'm sorry, I'm still learning my German, but I want to start by kind of uh, teaching you guys something. See, I started magic when I was a little boy and I was six years old when I got into magic. I fooled my father. I showed my dad a magic trick who is an engineer. And when I showed him the trick, I could see in his face that he was fooled. And it was the most magical moment of my life. So I've got this trick to show you tonight. But what I'm also going to do is hopefully fool you with you, fool you with it, but then teach it to you as well. Is that cool? Do you guys want to learn a magic trick? Say yeah. yeah. All right, beautiful. So here we go. This is the classic red silk magic trick. It uses a red silk. And watch very carefully. We pull the silk through the hand and then we start putting it into the fist. Like so uh, this waiter in the shot is not really helping. Um, I had a camera on the tripod and so you're going to miss uh, the handkerchief into the hand part. Uh, he's moving in a second. So regarding Adam's opening, uh, he's telling the audience that this is the first trick he's ever learned, right? When he was a kid, he was six years old and he was able to fool his father with it. Um, this is super relatable. Come on, you, you, you got to feel for this boy, right? And I think this is one of Adam's strong suit, to be honest, because he's super relatable. It takes roughly three seconds for the audience to fall in love with him. The same with Pop Hayden. He comes out there, he stands there, he's, uh, he's playing his charm, charm and, everyone, and everyone likes him. Same with Adam. I was able to witness at least a dozen performances of him and it takes the first 20 seconds until everybody is rooting for him and everybody likes him. Like this. Now, imagine I was six years old showing this to my dad. My <coughs> hands were shaking and he's looking at me with these big beady eyes. And I knew what he was thinking. Oh, it's probably going up his sleeve. So to try and be clever, I rolled my sleeve up a little bit. I put it all the way in. And now every good magic trick has what's called a cliched magic moment. It looks like this. The silk goes in the fist. I do the cliched magic moment. I know it looks silly, but the magic happens because now it's an egg. Pretty cool, right? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Actually, the silk can't change into an egg. It has to jump into my pockets. So that's the trick. That's the one that fooled my father. Thank you very much. <laughs> See, the, the thing about magic is once you know the secret of the magic, it's really kind of dumb, and I apologize for ruining magic for you, but to make this trick work, all you need is one of these and one of these. <laughs> I know, it's a fake egg made out of wood, all right? So you can get these at a hobby shop, but it's a hollowed out egg made out of wood. These are laid by uh, decoy ducks, those lay these, okay? Now that we have our props, our setup is next. Where do the props go? I'm right-handed, so my fake egg will go in my left pocket, okay? One of the silks is gonna go in my right pocket, and then the next silk is just sort of in play, in view, so I'm gonna stick it right here. Now, to get this trick to work, you have to do a classic of magic called palming. Palming is holding the fake egg in my hand in such a way that you don't see it. Now, if I came out and said, hello, my name's Adam Wilbur. I'm gonna do a trick. All your eyes would go to my hand because it's the only thing moving. So to hide me palming the fake egg, I do this. Hi, my name's Adam. Right, and you all look at the silk, but it allows me to palm out the fake egg. Now that you have the fake egg, all you have to do is run it over your hand a couple times, and that's gonna make it look like your hand is empty, okay? And then the rest is very simple. You just stick it into the hole in the egg, and if you know any good jokes, this is the time to tell the joke, okay? But it goes in, now you never show the egg from this side, because they'll see it going into the hole. You always show it this side, right? It goes all the way in. Now remember when I said they all have that cliched magic gesture? The only reason we do that is called building tension. So I pause, you're wondering what's gonna happen, and then I make a really goofy gesture and show you it's turned into an egg. And the silk is, oh, sorry. The silk is in this pocket. You want to practice it once or twice before you do it, you know? <laughs> now, there is a problem with this trick. This is a perfect environment to perform it because you're all in front of me. Sometimes I work corporate events and there are people all the way around me. If there's people behind you, you're in trouble because they can see through, they see the silk poking out and the trick is ruined. If that happens, this is what you do. 
This is where the real magic works. All you have to do is take the hole and actually peel it off the egg. Now hold on, watch me very carefully. <laughs> we'll get rid of that, watch this. That would have been awesome. <laughs> could you imagine? Well, I mean, I guess if I could really do it, it would look something like this. So cheers to you, sir. Happy birthday. Very cool. <laughs> I think I can see a bit of Lance Burton in there, but then with the, the goofy magic gesture, which he describes like this. Um, also a bit of Pop Hayden. So it's, it's the best of both worlds, I guess. I like the way he explains it. Adam's a tremendous teacher. And this also shines in this performance, which it's, it's a teaching act in, in itself, right? You, you, you show a trick, uh, you teach it to the audience, you fool them in the end. Um, obviously, there are so many more, but this would exceed the time we have for this video. Um, so I will watch them on my own. I'd like to point out one other project and it is by Cody Fisher and we love Cody Fisher. Cody Fisher is the, in comedy magic, he is the full package. He's charming, he's funny, he's absolutely fooling with everything he does and his tricks, come on, you gotta love them. Killer Prediction, um, the, 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 the big book of funny jokes, the, his book test, um, Free ropes, a thousand laughs. There are so many good tricks Cody Fisher brought into the market and they're all commercial and work perfectly. So Cody brought out a project which is called Silk 2 Egg, but not with T-O, like a transposition, but Silk 2 Egg. So what he's doing, he's bringing a spectator up onto the stage and the spectator is performing the trick with him. Uh, and he has his own egg and all of that. But then after the typical performance of uh, putting, the, putting the silk into the hand and changing it into an egg and pulling it out, he also changes the egg of the spectator into a real egg. And so he's fooling him twice, which is, come on, you gotta love it. But since I'm by myself and I don't have another person to practice with, I will um, stay away from Cody Fisher's silk two egg and uh, just dive into Pop Hayden Silk to Egg, Lance Burton, and from the book The Magic of Michael Lamar, where it pulls at the end the silk from his forehead, which uh, is also kind of a funny idea because it takes away the sting from the sucker gag beforehand. We, we don't want to, we don't want to, we want to fool people, but we don't, do, we don't want to make fun of people. And we're rolling. Uh, at this point, I spent roughly three to four hours practicing the special effect. And I took bits and pieces from the performances of Lance Burton, Adam Wilbur, and Pop Hayden and mushed it together. In all honesty, I prefer the Pop Hayden routine the most. So I'm going to stick heavily to this one. Behind the camera, there's my lovely wife, Julie. Julie, say hi. Hi. She agreed to be behind the camera, so I have a friendly face to look at. So, all right. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy schedule. Uh, I know you're busy you are with our little baby daughter and I highly appreciate what you're doing every day. Wouldn't you agree that magic is a wonderful thing? Absolutely, right. A famous magician, Pop Hayden, once said that magic is the second oldest profession. And that the biggest difficulty is that both professions are being ruined nowadays by amateurs. Um, and in retrospect, I don't know why I'm telling you this joke because you're clearly the wrong audience, so get the shit right, Felix. All right, moving on. Magicians have gained over the time some kind of a reputation in a way that they never explain how an effect is performed. But since I thought, since we're married and I love you more than anything else in this world, I thought it would be much, much more fun that instead of trying to trick you and deceive you, that I 
teach you step by step how one of those ancient miracles is being performed. Do you want to learn a magic trick? Yeah, that's great. So I'm going to show it to you and after that I'm going to teach it to you step by step. All right, this one is called the silk trick. Um, what you need is a red silk and you push it tightly into your fist into a very tight ball. You do this very thoroughly and as soon as the silk is completely encapsulated by your fist, you prepare yourself for the magic word and the magic gesture, which is... Abracadabra. Abracadabra? All right. Abra. Cadabra. And in this moment, the silk disappears and turns into an egg. Then the silk travels over there inside of my pocket, where it stays. And that's the trick. All right, so since I told you I'm going to show it to you and then I'm going to teach it to you, this is now the teaching part. Well, with the most magic tricks, when you know the method, the trick is kind of dumb. And this is no exception at all, right? Um, the magician uses two handkerchiefs. <laughs> I'm so sorry, you thought it's going to be something clever, right? No, the second handkerchief is inside of the eggshell. How else, right? Yeah, I know. Um, the first pro tip, and you probably want to write this down, use two handkerchiefs the same color. Otherwise, it takes away from the illusion. So, you need two silks, and you need one of these. This is a fake egg with a hole inside. Its insides have been removed. This is also very important because you would mess up your scarves if you do this wrong. So, you leave a hole inside the eggshell approximately the size of your thumb. At the very beginning, you store one handkerchief in a tight ball in the inside of your jacket pocket. This is very important because nobody knows that there is a second handkerchief involved. This gives you an element of surprise. Also, since nobody is expecting an empty shell, this gives you a second <coughs> element of surprise. So what you do next is you poke the handkerchief inside of the empty eggshell and you get prepared for the magic gesture as well as the magic word. So you put it in tightly. You breathe, you get ready. You say, abracadabra, wave your hand, drop the egg and pull the second handkerchief out of your pocket. You got yourself a magic trick. That's all to it. <laughs> All right, um, since in life nothing is really perfect, this trick is no exception, right? The trick is flawed because when somebody is behind you, he will have, he will have a drastically different experience than what are you having at this moment. You see, this looks like a very convincing solution. This doesn't really. So it will have a completely different experience. And from time to time, some wise guy from the audience will want to expect, inspect the egg. He wants to take a look at the hole and everything. And you can't show it to him because it would give him a, the method. Right. So what you do, and what you have to do before you can show it to them, is to follow it secretly. And I'm talking secretly. You peel off the hole and you hide the hole, something very inconspicuous. So if the audience wants to inspect the egg, you're going to do the following, you're going to pretend to crack the egg, and then you can inspect it as long as they like. Thank you very much. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you very much for being here. I hope you enjoyed this very first video of the series of me getting into magic. We are still looking for a proper title for it, so please feel free to drop your ideas in the comments. It's highly appreciated. As you know, we never monetize this video, so if you want to support us directly, head over to wolpinecreations.com and knock yourself out. If you don't find something immediately, no worries at all. Just make sure to leave your name and your email to get on our email list because we have a lot of tremendous content waiting in the wings. And finally, please subscribe to this channel and give us a like for this video. It goes a really long way. Next time, Adam and I are going over my performance and the whole mentoring thing is going to kick in, right? The refinement part. What we are looking for, what we are going to apply, all the theory, and Adam is going to bring in his experience as a performer. 
going to be great. It's going to be great. Trust me, okay? Until next time, have a good one.